This video is going to walk you through a more complicated example of using XLOOKUP and pivot tables to analyze information. Our goal is going to be to create the picture that we see here, which combines data from three different tables together and shows it as a pivot table. Now I've already come through here and added tables to each one. If you haven't reviewed this, you might want to go back and look at the intro video to see the exact step by step. Now one of the problems we have is trying to figure out what table to put the XLOOKUP in. In this example, I've already added it to the movie genre table, but you might think about possibly put it in the movie release table. Well, how do you know which one goes in which spot? Over here, we've got two different tables. One gives us information on categories with a percent value in them. One gives us information on sales. Now the common field in both of these is category. I could go from sale one to category A, or I can go from category A over to sale one. So how do I know which table to put the X lookup in? We see this the idea of what's called cardinality. Is it many to many or one to many or one to one? If you look at the table on the left here, I have got one category and that one category shows up multiple times on the right. So it's a one to many relationship. If I put the X lookup on the one side, it looks like it works. The problem though, is that it only pulls one value out of the table on the right. I get sale ID one, but I'm never gonna get sale ID two because the X lookup stops at that point. The key idea is I've gotta put the X lookup on the many side. If I'm on the many side of the relationship, it's gonna look for category A, find that, and then return the value. Then I'm gonna to go to the second row. It's gonna do the exact same process, look for category A, find the value and return it. And now I get all of the values showing. Find out which table has got one and put the X lookup in the side that has many. So many to one. Now in our example over here, we actually have a one to one. There's one movie genre to one movie release date. And if I scroll down, you'll notice that all of these sort of match up between the sides here. So that's gonna be one to one. And then I've got a one to many between the MPAA rating and the movie genre. So the R rating shows up one time in MPAA rating, but it's many times over here in movie genre. And so similar to the example before, I'm gonna make sure the X lookup is on the left side here in the movie genre table. Let's go ahead and do our X lookup. We're gonna look up a value, the MPAA rating in this table, and we're gonna find it in our black table over here. So I'm gonna choose the MPA rating column as my lookup, and then the return value as the title. I'm gonna do the same thing with release date. This time though, I'm gonna look up this movie title because that's the matching information in both columns. And you're gonna watch as I do a mistake here. So I selected the entire column for movie title and watch what happens. I'm gonna do the same thing where I try and find the movie title and the release date, but you'll see an error once I exit out. See how I have the spill error? That's because this formula is gonna automatically try and take every single input value, look it up and give you all the results out. It's a really common error. To fix this, make sure that when you look up the movie title, it is a single cell, not the entire column. And now that it fixes that problem. Now that I've solved this and I have all the data in a single table, I'm gonna make a pivot off of this. I'm gonna to go to table design, summarize, and I'll go ahead and put it on this existing worksheet to make it a little bit easier to look at the results side by side. All right, as I scroll over, now you see I have my pivot table and I can start to play with it. I wanna try and make it look like the picture I have above. I can see that I have a filter up top, years on the left, and some information on the labels. I'm gonna go ahead and drag the rating up to the top, adding a filter, I'm going to add information on the total gross to values. And then I want to do the release date lookup as the row labels. Lastly, I'm going to grab the MPA lookup and put that as columns. Now, when I do, you get an interesting error message. It says we couldn't complete the action because there's already something over here. This is a really common error in pivot tables, and it happens because I've got data over on the right. The computer doesn't want to have you wipe out all the data on the right hand side, so it gives you a little bit of a warning. I'll go ahead and insert a couple more columns and give myself some room. Now that I've got room, I'm going to drop that back under column 
And now I've got most of the data that I'm looking for. The biggest problem I have now is that there's too much data showing the pivot. I want to go ahead and add some filtering. Let's get rid of some years first. Now, a couple of ways I can do this, I can click to select individual items. I can also use either a value filter or a date filter. So for example, I can say, show me the current year or the last year. In this example, I've got pretty much almost the right thing. I just need to add 2011 and 2012. So I can come back in and add 2011 and 2012. Now I have the right number of rows showing. Next, I want to get the right number of columns showing. If you look at the right, you'll notice that I have general audiences, which is right, but I don't want to see the parental guidance or the NA values. I can do this to filtering through multiple ways. One way would be to come to MPA rating and pick which ones I want at this stage. I can unclick things like not rated or R, and they'll disappear down below. This is my lookup column here, MPAA rating on the left-hand side. I can also filter off of the right-hand side, which might be a little bit more convenient. To do that, I'm going to undo my filter up on top. And then now I can also use a filter on the button where I have here that says column labels. I'm going to click just general audience and restricted and click OK. And now I've got my information. One final piece is looking at the formatting. Right now it's not formatted, which makes it a little bit hard to read. I could come in and format them using the standard dollar sign. The problem with setting it this way is that sometimes it'll get reset as I remove and add fields. It's a better idea to come instead to the values option, go into settings, and then normally we would change sum, min, max, average here. Instead, click the number format button. This gives us a nice pop-up and we can choose exactly the kind of output that I'm looking for. And then this will stay even as I add new columns or remove columns. Hopefully that was a nice medium length example of using XLOOKUP and pivot tables.